he came out of the NFL lockout to talk to young people about the importance of sports, uh, about concussion prevention. And uh, here is Tim Tebow talking with my son, Brendan, uh, in April. And I want to share with you the two things he asked Brendan to remember, who's now going into his sophomore year at Oak Park River Course High School and loves football, having started to play with uh, your organization at age eight. So Tim Tebow's advice to Brendan were two, and I would think that they should be shared with all the kids. Number one, remember that you are a scholar athlete in that order. So don't forget your homework, keep your homework done before you go to practice, keep your grades up. And as Coach Fitz said, playing this sport is a privilege, not a right. So scholar athlete, number one. Number two, learn how to recognize the, the little aches and pains from the big important aches and pains of football. In other words, and this is really important, know what is a neurologic injury and know what isn't. This is Tim Tebow saying, I've had concussions, as you all know, he famously had a couple concussions where even the New York Times weighed in on whether Tim Tebow should be allowed to play in the following weekend's game or not. He said, you as an athlete know whether a blow and an injury affected your head and spine or not. If it did, get yourself out of the game. If it's the shoulder hurts, the knee hurts, you're playing through the pain of, of being tired, that's okay. That may still cost you a game, a season, even your career, but it won't cost you your life. So he said at the very youngest levels, you still should know or learn how to recognize what's an important hit where you have to take your, yourself out of the game and what is it. We're very involved in prevention efforts. Uh, the paper on your left from our journal is Physician Observed Concussions in Youth Hockey. It turns out that in 38% of youth hockey games, if there's a physician present, they're able to diagnose uh, that a concussion has occurred. Turns out it's about 10 to 15% in football. So we don't love the most dangerous game, but we need to publicize that, and that's what the uh, slide on uh, your right shows, is that when we find statistics that are startling like that, we get them out in a press release. Well, you know, football it has taken the brunt of the media exposure to the dangers involved in sports, but football isn't number one. We talked about hockey. But the number one sport in terms of causing concussions turns out to be cycling. And no one's talking about taking America's bicycles away. So what we have to do is make cycling, football, and every sport that you see here safer. It turns out that the use of a helmet old Viking could prevent one injury every four minutes in the United States. So if we're leading by example and we're talking about safety in football, you coaches should have a helmet on if you're riding a bike around your communities as well. It's just simply the right thing to do. Turns out 85% of traumatic head injuries with biking are preventable, but only 40% of people who own helmets even bother to wear them. Something to think about. I don't know what your politics are, and it doesn't matter, but this is what leadership means. You know, Barack Obama didn't like wearing helmets, but once he it looked like he was going to be a candidate for national office, where he knew his picture was going to be taken and people would be following his example, he knew he had to put that helmet on. And we have to, too. Well, how are concussions treated? Their physical rest and their cognitive rest. So, not only staying off of play or games, but also home from school. These recommendations are based on consensus, on the best available science, but the science is limited in this area. Getting better all the time, There's a, a, we have a long way to go. These are the reasons to return to the hospital, and I think these would be pretty obvious to any one of you, but really important to keep in mind. Headaches should be getting better, not worse, after a blow to the head, and if they aren't, get to the hospital. Well, finally, what programs are available to help with these prevention efforts? And Think First, and this is just a screen saves from the website, Think First was founded 25 years ago by the American Association of Neurological Surgeons, the Congress of Neurological Surgeons. It's the premier neurotrauma prevention organization in the United States. Uh, just a few slides that show that it has been shown to be an effective way of preventing head injuries, it's won a number of awards. I'll skip through those, but basically it's two programs. An elementary school program 
about spinal anatomy and safety in all areas. Um, it's available in multiple languages if any of you are teaching in Spanish speaking areas. And then there's a high school program which teaches about the really important uh, issues of texting and driving, drinking and driving, violence prevention, all the things Coates Fitzgerald was just talking about. It's been published in multiple languages around the world. Here's an example of Think First program going on in Algeria. So what are the, the future directions that neurosurgeons are involved in to try to make this sport of football that we all love so much safer so that we can continue to enjoy the sport and enjoy good health? Well, there may be some new game rules coming down the pike. Spearing is an absolute no-no and there's some consideration to creating a red card rule so that if you spear, you're out of the game as you would have in soccer. There may be some new return to play directives that are developed. There may be some new equipment. Some of you may even be experimenting with helmets that have uh, sensors in them, with accelerometers where we are collecting a lot of data about what happens when you have blows to the head. And now we need to know what that means and how we can use that information and the cumulative effects of that information in order to be able to protect our athletes. And then maybe even one day genetic or biomarker. So all concussions are serious. My take home message is don't hide it. Report it, take time to recover because it's better to would have missed one game than to miss the whole season. And it's better to miss a season than to ever take uh, a chance on the function of your brain or your spine. Finally, let me leave you with these websites if any of you want to copy them down where you can download all of those posters that I just showed you. Thank you very much as a parent for what you do to help us raise our sons to be great people. I'm very appreciative and thank you for your time.